Hey everyone, I'm Kirby. This is Kirby Meets Audio, and today we're gonna design a pair of studio monitors. So over the weekend, uh, I put up a poll on the YouTube community section, the community section of my YouTube channel, which I don't use that often. The poll was asking you what you wanted to see for my next build video. The choices were between studio monitors, custom CNC wood headphones, a home theater series, bass amp, and uh, just a guitar amp. So when I took this screenshot, it was dead even between studio monitors and the home theater series. Uh, I've been wanting to do studio monitors for a while now, so I, I, we're just gonna go with that. And we'll do the home theater series next. Thanks everyone for voting. Uh, it was a lot of fun and we're gonna do that again soon. So this video, we're gonna go over my steps on designing a speaker. There's a bunch of different ways to design speakers. Everything from just putting speakers in a box to, you know, systematically testing and iterating on your designs. This is how I like to do it. It's kind of a happy medium in between those two. So I like to break this down into six steps. So step number one for me is planning. Uh, I like to come up with a list of goals and constraints. Number two is going to be driver selection. Number three is planning out the enclosure design. Number four is planning out the crossover design. Number five is the actual build, so building the enclosure. And number six is putting everything together and measuring and iterating, seeing if we messed anything up and need to fix it and, and all that fun stuff. In the past, I, I have a few uh, playlists of speakers that I've put out one video for each of those steps. I'll link them up here or down in the description if you wanna check those out. This video will be kind of the planning and designing phase. The next video will be the actual build video. And then we'll do a follow-up video where I measure the speaker and we're gonna go over the crossover. Cause I wanna do that last after the speakers all together. And we'll talk about that reason why I wanna do that in a little bit. So I'm actually pretty excited to do a dedicated studio monitor build. I haven't really done that yet. And I got started in this whole audio fascination through recording. Um, in high school, I got a digital audio recorder and recorded myself and bands that I was in in high school and friends bands. Uh, and then after high school, I went to the Musicians Institute in Los Angeles to record, uh, to record, to study recording engineering and worked in studios after and, and recorded bands. And that's really where my whole fascination with speakers and stuff came from, so. Full circle here. So if you've ever been in a recording studio in the mixing room, you'll notice that there's usually multiple sets of monitors. Um, and those can really be split up into two types of monitors. One type is a mixing monitor and another type is uh, uh, usually referred to as artist monitors or money men monitors. So mixing monitors, usually you want them to be very flat very clinical, um, you don't want them to be colored in any way. You want those monitors to reproduce the music you're mixing in the most accurate way possible. The idea is that if you can mix the music on speakers that aren't designed to make the music sound better than it actually is, then your mix is gonna be the best it could possibly be. And those monitors are usually small, they might be square. I don't know if they are popular now, but they were back when I was working. The Yamahas, like the white coned rectangle monitors, those are famous because they didn't sound very good. <laughs> and uh, if you can make your mix sound good on speakers that don't naturally sound very good, it's gonna be a good mix. So then you have your artist or money men uh, monitors. Those are usually bigger, nicer looking, they, they might be up inset into the walls up of your studio. And those are designed to sound excellent and to make the music sound even better than what it actually sounds like. You flip those on when the artist comes in to hear what you they just recorded or when a producer or you know someone from the label comes in to uh, hear your progress. Covers up some of your sins, some of the artist's sins during the mix or during the recording. Uh, and they just sound good, makes it more fun. So with this project, I, I wanna do something that's a little bit in between. Uh, I, I don't want them to be super clinical because I'm not really gonna be mixing anything with these monitors. And I don't want them to be super, you know, uh, expensive using crazy drivers to where they sound, you know, absolutely amazing. I'm not gonna be EQing these or coloring them in any way other than just 
uh, the enclosure themselves and maybe some, you know, in software EQing. All right, so our step one is planning. Let's talk about goals and constraints. So one goal I want to keep in mind going into this design is I want low distortion. I want these uh, monitors to represent the music that they're playing very accurately. So one way to keep distortion low is to use a three-way design. So speaker drivers are designed to best represent a certain section of the full audio spectrum. So tweeters are designed to recreate high frequencies, midwoofers are designed to recreate the mids, and woofers are designed to recreate the low frequencies. Another one of our goals is to keep the enclosure size uh, reasonable. <laughs> I don't want them too big and they don't need to be too small. I want the enclosures to be ported to keep things simple and I want these to reach pretty much full range, uh, somewhere from 30 to 40 hertz on the low end up to 20,000 hertz on the highs. I don't want to have to deal with uh, an external subwoofer or anything like that. And my only constraints are, I wanna keep the budget reasonable. I don't want these, I want you guys to be able to make these if you want, and I don't want them to be like thousands of dollars worth of drivers. Uh, and I want to use, if I have, I have like some drivers here. If I have the drivers here and I think they'll work for this project, I wanna use those also to keep the budget low. All right, let's go to the computer and talk about enclosures. All right, so I wanted to get an idea of the different enclosure types that are common with three-way monitors. So I just went to Google Images, typed in three-way monitors, and this is what came up. Um, there's all different kinds. You know, there's these tall, thin, um, long, uh, and, and short. <laughs> but as I was scrolling through, there's two that caught my eye. So one is the Atom Audio. I, I, I've heard so many good things about the Atom Audio monitors. I still haven't heard one. I, I, I really want to get my hands on a pair, um, mostly because I, I want to see what they, I want to open it up and, and see what they're doing. I'm pretty sure they're bi-amping. They're doing so, a few secret sauce stuff. So that's, that's one design. So there's this like long, short design. Um, and then another one caught my eye, which is this, the Dana Audio uh, LYD48s. These are cool because they're pretty easy to design. They're, they're, they're not using any extra uh, drivers like the, the Atom Audio. Atom Audio are using two woofers. I don't know where it went. Oh, there it is. So it's using two woofers and a tweeter. That, I mean, this is, they also make a three-way version with a, with a little woofer down, or a mid-range down here. And then there's the tweeter. I think this is their, oh, yeah, right here. So we got a, a mid-range, a tweeter, and then the two woofers. I really like this, but that's adding a second woofer and we wanna keep the the budget low on this guy. So I think I'm gonna go with, oh, here's another, is this Adam? No, it just looks like Adam. Head. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go with this style. I like this style. One little hack for you guys. <laughs> um, if you're gonna design some speakers, especially speakers that are being designed for a specific purpose, so, like in this case, studio monitors, but maybe you're designing a center channel for your home theater system or you know a guitar amp, whatever it is, look up reference speakers, you know, companies that are making the speaker that you like. Check them out on a site like Sweetwater or Musician's Friend or just on their actual site and take a look at their specification. They put a lot of research into making that speaker good what are they doing? What information can you get that you can maybe apply to your design? So we're gonna go in here on Sweetwater and take a look at the specification section. So this is a powered speaker. Um, it's triamped. So there's an amp specifically for the highs, the tweeter, uh, the mids, and the woofer. That way they can design a DSP or digital signal processing unit that will work as the crossover and they can really zero in on exactly what each way or each driver sounds like. You have more control that way, control over the sound. All right, they're using an eight inch woofer for the lows, a four inch uh, mid-range speaker and a 1.1 inch tweeter. Okay, so this is probably a good uh, point to talk about powering. I have some pretty good amps that I wanna use to power these speakers. So I'm not gonna make them, I don't think, maybe I, I'm gonna change my mind, but I don't think I'm gonna make them powered. Like, like I don't think I'm gonna put amps 
in the speakers themselves. Um, they're gonna be externally powered. So these will be passive speakers using an external power source. All right, they're saying they have a frequency range of 32 Hertz to 21,000 Hertz exactly what we want. They're using a crossover frequencies of just under 500 Hertz and then just over 5,000 Hertz. They're using a ported design. This is kind of the big part. What size enclosure are they using? Theirs is just over 13 inches high, uh, about 14 and a half inches wide with just over nine inches deep. So we'll, we'll start out using their dimensions, throw in our actual drivers in our software and then you know make tweaks based on that. All right, so we decided we're gonna use the Dana Audio LYD 48s three-way monitors for our enclosure design reference. But I talked about Atom Audio earlier. One thing that Atom Audio does is they use a ribbon or AMT tweeter, which I really like. The Dana Audios are using a dome, soft dome tweeter great awesome tweeters i use them all the time i don't use uh, amt tweeters or ribbon tweeters very often i want to use them more often they're a little more detailed a little more sparkly and i think they're going to sound great in monitor situations and adam audio uses them who am i to say that's not the right thing to use all right let's pick some drivers so I'm on Parts Express. You definitely don't have to use Parts Express. There's lots of other speaker distributors out there. They have their own audio line called Dayton Audio. I use them all the time because they're easy to design for, they sound really good, and they're budget friendly. You don't have to use Parts Express. I'm gonna be using Parts Express. That's just that's just what's happening here. We're gonna start with tweeters. So we're gonna we're gonna try to use a planer or a ribbon. I, I am gonna use Dayton Audio in this uh, build. So I get flack every once in a while for that, but I, I have a lot of them and they're cheap and people like them. I don't know. I'm just doing it. What, what, <laughs> I'm sorry if that makes you upset. I think we're going to use this guy at least to start. One thing I should say, my like six steps of speaker design, it is not, one, it's not set in stone. You can do whatever the heck you want. This is just what I use. But two, it, it's not like a linear progression from one step to the other. If you pick a certain set of drivers, it doesn't mean once you get to the enclosure or the crossover design, you can't go back and switch your drivers that you originally decided on. Sometimes stuff just doesn't work well together. You'll realize at the end, when you start doing your crossover, that stuff doesn't quite line up. Iterate as needed. You don't need to set things in stone. So I think we're gonna start out with these guys. Um, let's take a look at some specs. So a frequency response graph graphs out the amplitude of certain frequencies over the spectrum. So if you're, if you're using a tweeter, you're gonna be looking at 1,000 to 2,000 hertz and up. Any big spikes in this graph would be a problem. Any big dips in this graph would be a problem. You're looking for a flat frequency response. Up to, you know, 10K, 15K, most people can't even hear over 15K, even 10K for that matter. So um, yeah, anything from about halfway through here down to about, yeah, here, 1K. Some some tweeters will be able to go lower than others. Um, a lot of dome tweeters will be able to get pretty low. Um, some even down to like you know, 500, 300 Hertz, which is kind of crazy, um, but that's a whole other topic. Usually looking for a thousand and up. 2000 and up. Now let's look for our midwoofer. And we're looking for something between three inches and four inches. You could probably go up to five inches, whatever. This is just what I'm gonna look at. So one good driver that I had an eye on was these PC83s. I really like the look of them. They look nice. They have this like woven woofer and they perform pretty good. Uh, I've used them in a few projects, quite a few projects actually. I use them a lot for my Bluetooth speakers and stuff like that. I use them in my kits even, kmakekits.com. They sound nice. They have a relatively flat frequency uh, in the mids. Think about that. The other thing, I, I also have them. <laughs> I have them in stock here. So that's just, a, that's goes for one of our constraints. Um, but another one, I think I have, I'm gonna have to look, but I think I have some reference drivers too. All right, let's, let's keep that in mind. Let's look at woofers and we'll see. One thing we could use is the designer series. They're really nice woofers. They don't, they perform really well. They don't look very good. 
Um, I mean, they look fine. They're just very plain, but they, they do give us the frequencies we want. Their FS is around 34. So with these drivers, we should be able to get down to 40, maybe even as low as 35. But I also want to look at Dayton's reference series. I really like their reference woofers and their eight inch refer reference woofers are really nice. So this guy has an even lower FS of 31.6 Hertz. Uh, the Q 1.25, that's great for us. And seven millimeters of excursion. And they look really good. <laughs> you know I'm a sucker for a good looking driver. I really love the phase plugs on these. I've also used these quite often and they sound great. I've designed with them multiple times. I know they sound really good in the lows. These drivers are, are supposed to be designed for reference listening. Now, whether they actually are specifically designed for that is, you know, who knows, but they are very nice. They sound very good. I think we're gonna go for eight inch reference series Dayton woofer, the four inch, which is actually a three inch, but that's a whole other thing, three inch, four or four inch uh, reference series mid, and then the Dayton AT AMT tweeter. Got all that? I'm gonna write it down. All right, so with the reference series drivers and the Dayton AMT tweeter, we're looking at about $335, $336 for just drivers. No crossover components or hardware. That's pretty good. Um, especially considering the monitors that we're trying to model our reference are over a thousand dollars each, each. So, you know, under $500 for a pair of monitors, pretty good and really good monitors, really good monitor. Again, I'm going for kind of that mid range, mid level budget. If you guys want to see budget budget, uh, studio monitors, that would be a fun video. It'd be fun to design for those. Leave a comment if you want to see that. So if you guys are liking what's going on here, hit the like button, please. It helps new people find this channel um, and subscribe if you're not subscribed. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a lot more stuff like this, letting you guys in on design process and all that stuff, so subscribe. All right, so now that we have some drivers picked out. Let's work on designing the enclosure. There's lots of different ways to design enclosures, including just drawing it out on a piece of paper. Um, but there are some software programs and free software programs uh, that make it a little easier and a little more accurate. On Windows, you can use a program called WinISD. Uh, I'll leave a link down in the description. It's free or it was free. I'm, I'm sure it's still free. Open source type of thing. I don't know if it's open source. I don't know why I said that. It's just free. Another tool that I've been using that's even easier than WinISD because it can be a little complicated adding in drivers to WinISD. There's like certain procedures you have to do to get it in there. I think I have a video. I think I did a video years ago on that subject. Uh, if I do, we'll link it here or down in the description. But the easier version is a an app for iPhone. They might make it for Android too, I don't know. It's an app called uh, Speakerbox Lite. I'm gonna be using it on an iPad. You can use it on your phone too. I think it's just gonna be easier for you guys to see on the iPad. So one thing that's really great about this program is that there is a collection of drivers within the program that have all the parameters already pre-populated. In order to accurately model how a speaker is going to sound or interact with an enclosure, you need to put in um, what's called TS parameters into the model. And those parameters uh, represent different mechanical attributes of that driver. So you normally have to put in all those manually. This program lets you just select the driver and that stuff just automatically goes in. Super cool. Oh, and it's free. I don't know if I said that. All right. So or at least free to use. They have like a pro version. If you like the program, get the pro version, you know, support people, that's awesome. So when you're designing an enclosure in software, you're designing the enclosure for individual drivers. So in a two-way design with a woofer and a tweeter, you're only designing the enclosure for the woofer. The tweeter has its own sealed enclosure that's part of the unit. For a three-way design, you're gonna be designing an enclosure of the big overall enclosure will be designed for the woofer. And then you'll probably be designing a smaller 
enclosure that will fit inside the bigger enclosure for the midwoofer. And then you don't have to worry about the tweeter. So we're gonna have to design two different enclosures for this big enclosure, for this speaker. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start with the woofer. Actually, we're gonna start with the mid-range. So I actually have these in stock. And these are the aluminum versions, the RS100s in four ohm. So let's design for that. So these are all the parameters, the few small parameters that you would need to put in yourself, but this program already has it pre-programmed, which is great. We're just gonna do a one speaker system because we're just designing it for the one speaker. So now we're gonna go to the volume, the box parameters, we want it to be closed, and we're gonna want this to be as flat as possible. So uh, we're just gonna go with the um, flat Buttersworth. Um, it'll fill in automatically what it wants the size to be. So we can look at the plot there. It'll go down to about 200 Hertz and that's great. All right, so if you want them to tell you how big the box should be, you will have to um, pay, for the, pay for the full version, um, but they do give you the cubic feet that they recommend to reach the amplitude response that they're representing, that they're showing you. So you can just take that, put it into you know a volume calculator and figure out uh, what size box. So this is the small box that's gonna go in the big box. All right, so I know my driver has a cutout, uh, baffle cutout diameter of three inches, just over three inches. Our enclosure, boxed little enclosure, needs to have an internal diameter that's larger than three inches. So we're gonna start with three and a half inches uh, by, I don't know, six, uh, with no thickness, because we're gonna use this as an internal diameter. Oh, look at that, zero point, oh my gosh, we nailed it, first try, 0 0.042, boom. All right, the internal diameter of our enclosure for the midwoofer, which will be inside our full enclosure, is gonna be three and a half inches squared uh, by six inches deep, the internal diameter of that enclosure. And it'll be sealed. I hope this is making sense. I don't know, it'll make more sense in the build video. So now we're gonna go back to our app. We're gonna select our woofer, RS25, no, 225. All right, this is the one we're looking for. We're gonna choose it. We're gonna use expanded, plots, one. So now we'll go to volume. This is gonna be ported, so vented. We also want max flat. And then we're gonna plot it. So that's getting us down to uh, about 37 hertz, which is perfect. We want it something somewhere between 30 and 40 hertz. Um, and we might be able to tweak that later on. So that has a VB or, you know, the volume inside the enclosure as 1.382 cubic feet. Now we can go back to the Dana Audio and they're using 13 inches, 13 inches high, 14 and a half inches wide and 9.2 inches deep. So let's do 13, 14 and nine. So in this scenario, we, I know what I want the front to look like, and I don't really care what, how deep I want it to be, right? So let's mess with the depth before we mess with any um, width and height. So let's up it to 11, 12. Okay, so we're starting to creep in on the same dimensions, which we're not, we don't want the same dimension. We don't want too many of the same dimensions in our enclosure. We don't really want the depth to be as long as uh, the height. We don't want squares, that kind of stuff. It's okay to do that. We just don't want it. We'd rather not have it, especially in this because of the layout of the drivers. All right, so let's up this to 14. And we're getting closer. Man, maybe it needs to be 16. 16 inches deep seems too big, but that, that gets us there, almost there. It should be a little bit bigger. But let's, another handy thing to have 
is a tape measure. So think about, it, it helps to actualize in real life what you're putting down, you know, in on the screen. So we're right now we're looking at 15 inches wide. So that's 15 inches wide. And then, you know, you can put it up. They're gonna be next to my monitors, up on my desk. So, you know, 15 inches is pretty good. They're big, but that's pretty good. I don't wanna to go too much bigger than 15 inches. 13 inches tall. I mean, the woofers are eight inches. So that leaves, you know, three and a half, two and a half inches on each side of the woofer, including the mounting plate, so a little less than that, probably two inches on top and bottom of the woofer. But 13 is okay. Still pretty big. I would rather have 12, rather have 12 inches, but uh, 16 inches deep is really deep. That's a bummer. Also, you have to keep in mind that there's gonna be another enclosure inside this the big enclosure for this woofer. So they're just gonna to have to be deep. 18 inches deep. All right, so we have to keep in mind that there is gonna be a smaller enclosure taking up space inside our big woofer enclosure. So our smaller enclosure uh, we determined was gonna be 0 0.042 uh, cubic feet. So we're gonna to have to add that to our 1.38 cubic feet for our woofer enclosure. So what we're looking for is around 1.43 cubic feet for our woofer. So this is too big. Let's go to 17, 1.49. So you can get very precise about this. There are other things inside the enclosure that are taking up volume. So uh, the woofer magnet, like we said, the enclosure for the mid range, also the enclosure, the built-in enclosure for the tweeter also takes up a little bit of volume. So uh, you could be exact. I'm not going to be because I don't feel it needs to be exact. I'm just going to err a little bit on the higher side. Uh, so right here with an enclosure size of 16 inches wide, 13 inches high and 17 inches deep uh, gives us almost one and a half, just under one and a half cubic feet um, of volume. All right, so the next thing we need to talk about in terms of enclosure is the port. So we know we want this to be ported. Um, our app uh, speaker box light uh, has a built-in port generator thing. So let's go into that. We're gonna use a round port. We're gonna use one flared end and we're just gonna use one port. We want our FB about just under 40 Hertz. So they are recommending a three inch diameter port uh, that's uh, just over seven inches long. So let's see if we can find one of those. I really like these adjustable ports, but I think the largest one is only two inches in diameter. All right, and they do make a, a ported kit. So we're gonna use this guy. This guy, pretty good price. I mean, it's not great, but just under $14. And they can accommodate port sizes up to 17 inches long. I've also used these before, they're really nice. So that's good. All right, so the last thing I wanna to touch on this video, uh, it's getting kind of long. <laughs> um, I know I said I just wanted this to be three parts, but maybe I'll add a part in between uh, this video and the build talking about crossover. Um, I feel like it's gonna just be too much to get into the crossover in this video. So my plan for the crossover is to measure the speaker when it's all together after uh, it's been built and then build the crossover specifically for the drivers inside the enclosure they're gonna be in. Um, that's the best way to do it, especially because this is gonna be a studio monitor, that's the best way to do it. But I kinda wanna do a preliminary uh, crossover design just to make sure that all these components are gonna work well together. I'm pretty sure they are, I'm pretty confident that they are. I've used a lot of these components before, um, but it's just a, a nice little extra step just to be sure. And we can go over a crossover design together. So I'll, I'll probably put that video in between. That'll be the next video out. Um, but the last thing I wanna talk about, we're still talking about enclosure, <laughs> is uh, aesthetics. So you might know me, I like my speakers to look nice. One way to do that uh, is to mock up what the speaker's gonna look like or what you want the speaker to look like once it's done. I, I like to do that in uh, Affinity uh, Designer. So let's go over to the computer. 
So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put in a wood texture um, that I like. I like to use walnut quite often, so we're gonna use walnut in this case. Uh, I'll put it in in the dimensions that I think the enclosure is gonna end up being. That can change later, not a big deal. Um, and then I'll start to put in uh, the woofers. So this isn't the exact woofer we're gonna be using. I, I did this earlier based on um, the other mid-range woofer that we were looking at, um, but it'll look basically the same. It's the same size. And then we'll use a tweeter again, not the tweeter we're gonna be using, but a similar size. I do have that. I have this tweeter also in stock, by the way. So it might be fun to switch this out. And once the speakers are done, do some sound tests based on uh, the dome tweeter versus the AMT tweeter, just to see how they sound, how they differ. And then we'll put in the woofer. So this is kind of a rough idea of what I want the final speaker to look like. It looks a lot like our Dynaudio uh, reference monitor that we kind of are modeling this, these monitors after. This is a nice way to zero in on what you want your design to look like. I, I, I've been using this process recently to work on some design for tweeter array speakers. There's a little Easter egg for you. So these are, uh, these are some tweeter arrays that I've been working on. I really wanted to figure out how I wanted to arrange the tweeters in these speakers. This is, I'm not gonna get into how these arrays work. Um, that'll be another video. I, I wanna build these eventually. This is a little sneak peek. Um, maybe I'll put it in a poll for an upcoming build video. At some point you guys can vote whether you wanna see these or not. But these are some really cool designs and it kind of goes back into what we were talking about with uh, tweeters and like what section of the audio spectrum they're best used for. Normally they're best used for a thousand to 2000 Hertz and up. We're going to try to use them lower down to 500, maybe even lower than that and see what happens. So I use this method to design the layout of my drivers to get a better idea visually of what the speaker is going to look like once it's done. Uh, where things are going to line up. You know, I, I want the tweeters to line up with the edge of the woofer. I don't want, you know, things to look odd. Where am I going to put the uh, port tubes, that kind of stuff. So another fun little, little tip for you. Anyways, this took a while. It was fun though. I enjoyed taking you through the process of designing a speaker. So caveat to this whole thing, um, just because <laughs> I did things a certain way in this video it doesn't mean that's how they're going to end up at the end. Like I said earlier, this is an iteration that happens throughout the whole process. So even during the build, things might change. Um, but yeah, this is where we're at right now. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, I'm going to have links to everything I use, all the free software, the drivers, um, anything else I can think of that might help you down in the description. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to see more audio content like this. Um, thanks, guys. See you in the next one. Bye. Bye. I almost said peace, but that's, uh, that's another YouTuber's thing. Bye.